Okay, today we're looking at the Lada 750s. These are all AAA. There's the Lada 750 right there. As well as the Lada 900, a set of four as well. There's two here and two in a flashlight. So there's all four of them. The Lada 900s are three years old. These are new. If you haven't seen the previous videos where I've talked about the new edition of the Ladas, these are new. I guess they are new because they're 750s and before Ikea was not selling a 750 milliamp hour version of the AAA batteries. They only had these 900. These were cycled 20 times. But one quick note is that the performance testing has changed slightly. There's a new profile being added that's been added to this these tests. The cool thing is that I wanted to set a specific charge current and then change the discharge current based on the different profiles that I wanted to test it at. I kept the charge current at 500 milliamps because that's to me was about half C for these uh, AAA batteries. I don't want to go too high because you know a, a thousand milliamp on a 750 milliamp hour battery is a little bit it's a little harsh. So I, I kept it at 500 milliamps so it wasn't too low uh, but also wasn't too high. That's just, I just picked right in the middle. And then discharge, I went across a range of 100 milliamps, 300, 500, 700, and 800. And the reason why I didn't go to 1,000 is because I didn't want to go above of the 1C rating of the Lada 750s. That way it's, it's a better comparison. Let's take a look at the data. So we start off here with the IKEA Lada Grays. That's these guys, the 750s and it's pretty good. These are triple A's, so I'm expecting to see a little bit of a different pattern than you might see with double A's because they have a much higher capacity. So as we go up in discharge current, the capacity will decrease, which is different than we saw with like the Analoop Pros, uh, Ikea Lada 2450s, both the new color and the previous color. These I would expect that as you get up to 1C and then exceed 1C, that the capacity would decrease a little bit. And so we see that here. At 100 milliamps, we average around 798 milliamp hour, which is awesome. It's well above what it's rated at, which is 750. And then the middle range, the 300 and 500 milliamp discharge, 790, 770, as we go up, in discharge current to the that's just below and then just above the rated capacity 700 milliamp and 800 milliamp we stay at 767 and 760 we don't actually ever drop below the 750 milliamp hour rating and the individual cells of the lot of four none of them fell below 750 milliamp hours so that was impressive let's go take a look at the ikea lot of whites that's the, the previous version i don't i don't think they're available right now yeah, it looks like they have three choices. And it kind of makes sense because if we look at the 900s, the performance difference between these two, there's not a lot. I mean, if you really need something, the max amount of capacity you can squeeze out of a uh, AAA battery, then these might get you there. But if you look at the test results, now again, these are three years old and they've been used probably 100 charge cycles. These came in at about 918. Again, above 900 milliamp hour, even at the lowest uh, discharge current. And then the mid-range, 300 to 500, they were right on the mark, 904 and 900 milliamp hour. And then as we go into the higher discharge currents, 700 to 800 milliamp, it drops below, just slightly below 900 milliamp hour at 899 and 897. So let's look at the charts and graphs for this. We'll first take a look at the 750 and notice that all of them fall well above the 0% level, which is 750 milliamp hour. And most of them, actually all of them are between the zero and 5%. And then the 900s, which again, the, the ones I have are three years old. I can't find any new ones, so I could only test the ones that I had. They're right at the zero, basically right at the zero. Even the cell two, which seemed to kind of be the one that was the weakest, it still was well above the, the plus or minus 5%. It was well above the minus 5% tolerance. So the cells are still incredibly 
robust even three years on with like I said over 100 chart cycles on them last chart here is just comparing the two the 750s versus the 900s we're talking about a 20 percent charge capacity difference whereas with the with the double A's it's still not a huge swing between the two as far as capacity but some of them actually like the Enelope Pros I mean they were they're well up into the 2.7 uh, amp hour, whereas the standard batteries, standard antelope, hung around 2.05 amp hour, 2.1. So it's more like a 30 to 35 percent difference in capacity. So again, not a huge difference, but it's still a lot more notable in the AA cells than it is in the AAA cells. You can see here, just everything's bang on with right at the zero percent mark. You know, the 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 lot of whites. 900 milliamp hour just falling a little bit below that with the higher char discharge currents and the grays being above that at the lower discharge currents. Let's now look, let's shift gears and look at the impedance testing. The 750s were pretty awesome. The internal impedance measurement for the LADA 750s turned out pretty nicely. It's pretty consistent across the range, which is a target current between 60 milliamps and 1200 milliamps, which is 1.2 amps. I'm just going to talk mainly about the average impedance at each run, and you can see that it's pretty consistent, but it does decrease as the target current goes up. It gives us an average internal impedance of about 121.58 milliohm. I just plotted all this on the graph like I did before, and you can see that it's pretty consistent across the cells. What I wanted to see is, does this data yield us a pretty linear reference? So if we look at how linear this testing was, you can see that it has a pretty good R squared value. Now, this internal impedance measurement, again, is a reference value, it's not an absolute value. With that in mind, let's switch over to the IKEA lot of white, and we'll learn a little bit about the differences in the cells. The IKEA lot of white showed they have a little bit higher in average internal impedance at about a 139.6, which I was expecting to see this because these cells have a little higher capacity. Their shelf life is a little bit lower between charges, whereas the 750s are higher. Um, IKEA doesn't just describe this stuff, but we know the te technology is of a low self-discharge nature. So here we see a bit higher out of the gate at the 60 milliamp target current at 144 milliohm. But then it also does come back down again to about 133 as we reach 1.2 amps. Again, over the 1C rating of the cell. So the average internal impedance is about 139.6. There's more variance here, but the overall average impedance being a bit higher, I'm not surprised by that. I would That's something that I was sort of expecting because of the nature of this particular cell being of a higher density than the uh, 750s. The individual battery internal impedance with the specific loads, you can see that there's, there is more variance there, but when you average out across four cells, I do feel like there is, I don't know if you would actually see this much, uh, a 20 milliohm increase or more if they were brand new cells, there'd be some difference. And then rounding this out, we look at the graph of the internal impedance over the load current. The R squared value is again, very good, 0.8874, so pretty close to linear. It shows that the way that I'm testing these is representative and is giving some data that we can use to get an indication as to how the cells are performing. It was all over the place and we couldn't we couldn't determine if it was any sort of characteristic curve, then I think we would need to reevaluate how the testing uh, operates. Not much more to say on the cells. They tested really well, as I expected they would. They're at a good price. Unfortunately, I don't think in most countries you can get the 900s anymore. I don't know if IKEA is planning on a replacement to these, but again, I would say probably don't need them. I have them, I'm gonna keep using them. The 750s I think are sufficient and probably just easier, cheaper, and just fine to manufacture for most things that you're gonna be using them for. Yeah, that's it. So that's the IKEA Lada 750s and the IKEA Lada 900s, AAA, good cells. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.